Every year, thousands of children are born with autism in Nigeria. These children with autism are not diagnosed and managed on time, hence their family and society see them as burdens sometimes. Due to the inability of the parents and most health workers to detect children with autism clearly early, they, the children, suffer great health loss. Some are even denied their right to basic needs. Some are isolated by their families due to the shame of having a child with intellectual or cognitive disability. Joining us via Skype is Lanre Awoli to take a look at this reality. Good morning, Lanre. Good morning. Thank you for having me on the show. Thank you for joining us. Let's go straight to the matter. Uh, what has been your involvement with special needs and especially those with autism? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I've been involved with the treatment of autistic people and people with cognitive impairment for 16 years now, and um, I've worked both in the public and private sector in Nigeria and in the United Kingdom. Um, within that period, I've um, been involved in care planning, um, um, also in assessment and in policy and advocacy and training. Um, my background is in psychology and social work. So at present, I'm working with organizations in Nigeria and families to find better ways of treating people with autism. You define the condition known as autism because clearly not so many people even understand the condition. No, yeah, that's true. Um, we look at autism as a cognitive developmental disorder. And... Um, Sometimes people look at it in the social context as a social um, developmental disorder because autism actually affects the sufferer in four strands. One is uh, in the area of relationship. People with autism find it very difficult to form proper relationship with peers, with family, because they do not really understand what the emotional aspect of it. They just cannot um, emotionally attack, get attached to their um, carers and family. So there is always a problem with um, um, relationship, especially social relationship. Now, autism again, have, there's another problem that have a social strand to it, and that's communication. Most autistic people find communication very difficult because for them, communication is factual. It's not the way we talk, I'll put it in quote normally, because in the way that autistic people view communication, they see it in the sense of being what you say is what it means. So for example, if you tell an autistic person, oh, this is cool, he actually is looking at the word in a factual sense. So there's always that disparity when you have communication with people with autism, it is very difficult. Also, we look at autism some of this um, approach or the same terms that you can see when you are looking at defining autism is in area of routine. And I believe that this period of isolation is even more difficult for people with autism because they are very concrete in their routine. They find it difficult to change. If they work in a particular way, they believe that it continues. And also we look at autistic people having a particular aspect of their life where we call that they have some things that they do that is repetitive. They just do those things over and over again. And if you stop those things, it can be challenging. So when we look at autism, we look at it as a behavioral disorder that's, that has a neurological aspect to it that affects people in their social environment. And find, they find it difficult to have social adaptation like normal people. All right, you've made a very important uh, point there where you say the, the, this period of isolation will be a bit more challenging for them yes, because it's true. not a normal routine that they are used to. So what do you suggest would be the best way to handle that situation, especially for parents or those who have got you know, autistic children or relatives or siblings? Well, there's still the challenge. So it depends on how the parent wants to work with their sibling. For example, they have to make sure that they find simpler ways of communicating to them. There are so many, at the moment, there are so many support online that people can use, especially in the area of communication. They shouldn't just assume that 
this um, pe the people suffering with autism will not understand what is happening, but they should find ways of communicating the changes that are happening every day. It's still going to be challenging because nobody knows how this thing is going to end and when it's going to end. But how we will have to focus on this is to find proper ways or easier ways of passing this message to them, maybe through um, picture or maybe through constant um, reminder of saying, letting them know that this is what is going on. Things are not going to be the same. School are not going to be the same. Um, routine are not going to be the same rather than just assuming that they wouldn't understand. We should just find simpler ways of communicating with them. They need to know as well. All right, let's speak of the theme for this year, which is a transition oh. to adulthood. Why is this crucial? Yes. Uh, this why is this a crucial area to focus mm. on? Oh, that's a very um, important question. Again, um, transition for everybody is crucial. The, the world is facing a kind of a transition at the moment, but generally, it's not just specific to autistic people. Although the theme is transition to adulthood. Every children move from one point to the other. They move from being adolescent to being youth to being adult. And for autistic people, it's not different because, you know, the time of being teenagers is a time of um, identity and confusion. And once we stabilize that, we need to move them on into proper independence. The theme for this year that is um, moving to transition to adulthood is very important because um, for autistic people, just like everybody, they have goals and they have objective, whether we realize that or not. And they want to, they have the right to be independent as well. So the importance of this is to help them to gain their independence, to let them know that they are part of the society and they have contribution that they can put in society as well. So moving in that direction is what is important to let families and to let carers and the society know that they have goals, they have objectives, they have achievements, and they have um, ways that they want to um, achieve this goal. That is why it's important because it's not just specific to them. It's specific to every human race. It's specific to every young people. So this is important that we are looking at it. Thank you so very much, Larry, for joining us and making this clarification. Yes, thank you for having me.